what's the point in creating this amazing document um, and then it just sit there on your course site. Um, so we'll, we'll think a bit about how you could use it or how you can ensure that it's used um, properly and, and, and you, useful for students specifically. Um, let's continue. So the first thing I want to do is sort of um, position this webinar. So it, as I said, it's a, a small part of the bigger umbrella framework, which is called the umbrella framework. And um, it's not the umbrella framework, it's the enable framework, excuse me. And enable stands for Enabling Accessible Blended Learning for Equity, which is an output that came from a project that we did here at Thought um, called Redesigning Blended Courses Project that was funded by DHID from 2021 to 2023. And we've done lots of work over those um, years. And one of the outputs that we are continuing to use in our mainstream and work here at Thought is this enable framework. Okay, and the, the, the purpose of this framework is to promote inclusive, digitally enabled learning for um, and that is a big um, goal, but we are going to work at it in little bits and pieces. For example, focusing on the course outline today. Um, and then also a, an important part of this um, framework is that all of the materials released um, it's really, all of the materials are released as open educational resources. So within this framework, there are multiple further documents and um, diagrams, infographics that that we are releasing for people to use um, as OERs. Um, you'll see on the screen there's a diagram, and this is what we are using to represent the enabled framework. So. There are different, um, what we'll call them, um, sections. So, for example, the, the, we'll start on the left hand side, starting with deliberative course planning, and then student centered learning. Thank you, Nadine, they're called elements, different elements. And um, deliberative course planning, student centered learning responsive teaching and online engagement, flexible assessment and feedback, expansive evaluation and reflection. And then in the middle, you'll see there's um, one element called accessible course materials and technologies, and that as well as the communication element that apply to all of the other elements. So um, the, the goal of this diagram is to indicate how everything you can follow through this process from course planning to evaluation and linking all of that together is communication as well as creating accessible course materials and technology. Okay, at the end of this um, PowerPoint, there is a link to the web page where, we, um, where you can find more info about the, the framework and the document related to each of these elements. So that's a bit of background. And now I want to focus in, I want to zoom in on the course outline. So within these are these elements are quite inclusive of everything that you may do in a course. So I want to focus in on the course outline specifically so that we can have a bit of a digestible um, uh, tidbit to work with. So I want to, I want for us to think about why, why focus on the course outline, why is this important? Um, and some of these reasons might be that it's because it's one of the first points of contact that students have, including um, some, so they, they would have gotten to your course via other points of contact, but the course outline is one of those first points of contact. Um, so it's something that they 
see about your course and that it, it creates an impression. Um, and then also the course outline represents the journey that students are about to undertake. So this is at the very beginning of that journey. And this course outline can be a representation of, of what's about to come. And then it can also act as a blueprint for the course. So it can have, be the master plan, like the yeah, the, the map that, that um, students can take a look at to see where this course is taking them. And then it can also be used to address any uncertainties, questions, or worries that students might have. And these things come up in their in, in high numbers throughout the course. Students wonder what where does this assessment fit in, or who to contact about that thing, or um, what is it, what's the topic of this week again, or those types of things that create quite a uh, heavy and um, cognitive load on them, and all of those things can be addressed by a course outline. Okay, so I want you also to think by yourself about why a course outline might be important for you and your course, um, if there's anything outside of these possible reasons why it might be important. But I think we can agree that it's 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 quite a it can be quite a um, a loaded document to to have and to create. And I thought if a course outlined as a person, this is what it would probably feel. No pressure, all of these things. <laughs> are needed to be achieved um, and it's probably stress. But um, I'm hoping that after today we'll be able to take the course outline um, template or the checklist, however you want to use it, and make it into something that, that can be used and that can be a valuable resource for yourself and your student. Um, okay. So I want to talk about the template and the checklist that I've mentioned. And it's, it's a guide. I want to, to um, emphasize that it's a guide um, that you can, you can use parts of it. You can use it as a whole, um, but it, use it, let it be useful to you. It's not um, a, a, an absolute set in stone thing that you have to follow. It can be a guide that you can use to create accessible, inclusive, and equitable um, a course outline. Okay, so it's something that can be usable by all students in your course, students with different backgrounds, abilities, religions, genders, racial populations, languages, learning preferences, etc. So something that can that can be used by, by all of the students in your course. And this, it kind of, when created um, thoughtfully and, and, and purposefully, your course outline can address things like the motivations and interest, interests of students and why are they there. They can, they can get to grips with the, the reason for, for taking that course. Um, you can address any knowledge and skills that they may bring to the course and how it can be used throughout the course. So they can identify um, areas with, with this thread could be um, used. It, you can also indicate that there are different um, engagement opportunities because students have preferences for engagement and, and they possibly trust certain spaces over other spaces. Um, and your course outline can can let them know that there they are different um, opportunities for them. You can also um, indicate that for, for students of different languages, whose who's first language is in English, for example, um, that there are spaces for their voices to be heard as well. And then lastly, you can also use the course outline to indicate that it's a safe space to disclose any challenges or barriers to learning that they might experience if they are ready to disclose that. Okay, um, so this course outline can, can, can be used for different purposes and can have many different uh, messages that you 
that you give to students. Okay, a few things to consider before creating your course outline. So the first thing is the actual course outline document. Um, think about where you'll store this document, what format will this document take, and it, will it be and a format that will be accessible to students, first of all, and that you can easily keep up to date because things change throughout the year and you might want to make a few tweaks or changes to it um, during the, the duration of your course. And so we suggest consider uh, that you consider using something like Google Docs, which, which is a file sharing and collab co collaboration um, platform. I mean, there are other ones, but Google Docs is a, a quite a, an easy and popular one to use. Um, and this could allow you to set permissions for students so that they can comment. Um, and, and it gives them an opportunity to ask questions or make comments on the course outline. Um, and the Google Docs also allow you to immediately make changes as things occur. So that's something to keep in mind. And the other thing to consider before creating your course outline is to um, imagine and put into on paper a mind map or some sort of graphic organizer that would illustrate the key concepts or connections in your course. Um, and this could help students to mentally orientate themselves to all of the threshold concepts and ideas that you cover in your course. Um, and it can also um, it can also provide students with, with the overall sentiment of your course and, and illustrate if there are any systems or processes that, that are useful um, in your course for them to know. Okay, so before going into the headings of the course outline, um, I want to ask if there are any questions, if, if everything is clear enough so far, if, everything, if, if there's anything that stands out that you are unsure about, you can ask it now if you want to. Okay, if not, we'll continue, but the chat is there for you to, um, to ask anything you want. Okay, so the course outline headings that we'll go through includes the welcome, first of all, and then secondly, the convener, lecturer, tutor, and administrator details, um, whatever you might have on your course, and then a section on where do I begin, and then there's the course introduction, and then number five is the structure and scheduling of the course, then assessment, and lastly, a glossary of terms, abbreviations, or acronyms. So these are seven things that um, that you can take, leave, pre-work for your course. Um, as I said, it's a guide um, that can that will help you assist you to create a course outline that's um, accessible, inclusive, and and equitable. Um, these things are numbered for us to know where we are throughout this um, webinar. But of course, you can. You can change the order of, of these headings as you see fit. Um, okay, so that was a, a little disclaimer, but now we are ready to continue. So the first um, section of your course outline, it makes sense for it to be the welcome method. And this is where you can think about how you can best make your students feel welcome in your course. Um, and we suggest creating a personal message of welcome. You can give students a glimpse into your personalities and things that you, I mean, we're all different and we all have different ways of communicating. And this welcome message can give students a, 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 just a glance into who you are and, and yeah, basically let them know that um, you, you're, you're also a human being and you have likes and dislikes, you know, just the convener or the lecturer, you know. Um, and what I have on the next slide is a little example of a welcome message that I particularly liked. Um, it's something to give you an idea of what it could be. And okay, yeah, there you go. So this um, lecturer said, welcome. 
and this is not the traditional way of opening a course, but a strong message. So this is where you have a home and a sympathetic ear and lots of support. You are part of a really tiny percentage of people to arrive at UCT science faculty, and you are important for yourself, your family, and for the university and this country. I have taught at UCT now for over 25 years, and it has been a joy and a privilege to have worked with thousands and thousands of students and to see so many of them make a success of their studies and their future careers. So once again, you are all welcome, every single one of you, and this applies to all speakers of any language or languages, of any skin color, of any nationality, of any religion, of any sex, LGBTQI, tall, short, skinny, or otherwise, medio, charismatic, forty or sedentary, extrovert and introvert, etc., etc. And we hope to pay you consideration and respect and care. And you can clearly see this this lecture and um, the passion and the, the the generosity of spirit that um, he had towards the student. Um, I hope you can see that well, and I hope it gives you some ideas of how you can um, craft your own personal message of welcome to student. Okay. The second thing that um, we have on our course outline headings is the details of conveners, lecturers, tutors, and administrators. Um, the, the prompt here is to think about any essential details that the teaching team can provide a student to, to give them an idea of the team's availability and experience. And we, we highly encourage photos to make it more personal, um, as well as link to, linking to any existing bios um, on the departmental website, for example, so that students can get a better sense of of what the what the teaching team brings to the course. Okay. Um, this moving on to the next um, heading of the third heading of the course plan. It's a, it gives students an idea of where they can begin. So you can give students um, a very detailed guide on how they can best be prepared for the course. And you can help them to navigate um, how they need to engage in whether in-person, blended mode, or fully online. So it gives them a starting point, because often students uh, might feel completely lost and don't know what way to begin, but this is a very clear starting point for them. Um, and um, I've included useful um, information that you might give to them at this point in the course outline, including um, if there are any prerequisites, for example, equipment that they might need, if it's a blended or online course, um, anything that they need to do beforehand. For example, they, they might need to complete a pre-course survey um, and also indicate to them how it will be used in the course. And then you can tell them where all of the course materials are kept on Villa or Amatuba and how they can access them. You can add a hyperlink in the course outline for them to, to um, go to the, um, the course site immediately. And then also give them the date and time of the very first session and also the venue, or if it's an online um, first meeting, any video conference in detail they might need to access that. So it's a very um, brief, uh, but cons a concise and, and, and clear starting point for students to that they need, things they need to do and know and access before the course. Okay, and then the course introduction section. So this could possibly be quite a lengthy part of your course outline. And it would include indicating to students what they need to know by the end of the course, what they need to be able to do by the end of the course, and also what they need to be or reveal or feel by the end of the course. And these things, um, uh, um, it, it refers to course uh, to any learning outcomes, so course level outcomes or um, week or topic level outcomes, for example. Um, so the questions under each of these um, know, do, or feel um, 
part of the course in production include, for well, the first one, you could describe the overall aim of the course. So as well as how many perspectives you bring, do you bring to bear on the topic and whose knowledge might be privileged or marginalized or silenced. Um, so this is very much related to the knowledge aspect of, of the course, what, what students might need to know and whose knowledge is has bearing on the course. Then the second one about what students need to do is quite practical in terms of their skill sets, the, what they need to be able to, to the skill set they need to, to develop, for example, written, oral, visual communication, sign language, presentation skills, etc. And you can be very clear about these things. The students can have a heads up about what, what are the skills that they will be working on throughout the course. Um, and you can also indicate any um, institutional or faculty or departmental support systems that are in place for, that they can draw from to help them develop these skills. They don't, uh, they don't necessarily have to rely on the course only. Um, and then the last round about what students need to be or reveal or feel by the end of the course. This relates to um, ways of being. Um, that you want students to develop through taking your course. So, for example, inclusivity, self-determination, perseverance, self-regulation, self-motivation, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's, a, it's a bit of a list there, but you want them to know these are the things that they can be, that they can look forward to, to developing throughout the course. Um, and then you can also think about how these dispositions can be encouraged and nurtured or acknowledged throughout the course. Okay, this is quite a massful. As I said, it can be a, a, quite a, um, a big part of the course outline, but I want to encourage you to, to, to put extra time and effort into this because it can, it can provide important and, and useful information to students at the beginning of the course and they can also refer back to it throughout the course and um, for them to see that they are on the right path, how they are tracking, etc. Okay, I'm moving on to the next slide. So this is quite a practical section um, where you can indicate the structure and scheduling of the course. Um, and I want you here to think about how you can easily display the overall structure and scheduling. So um, one sort of a bird's eye view of, of, of um, what it might look like when students go through the course um, during the term or semester or year. Um, this would also include the, the structure part of this heading includes the learning outcomes and, and seeing how the learning outcomes relate to each other. For example, you might have course learning outcomes, course level learning outcomes, and then weekly or module or topic level outcomes. So in this part, it would be useful to indicate how all of those learning outcomes are related or linked to each other. Um, so you can use a, a, a graphic organizer, for example, to illustrate this. And then the scheduling part of the course outline would indicate all of the activities, as well as um, date, deadlines, times, the topics, the lectures involved in those topics, and the resources, tools, and assessment topics. So it's, it's a glance at the course. Um, as a whole, basically. And this can be a very useful part of the course outline, both for yourselves and for students, um, to see things in, in one view. Okay. Then moving on to the assessment part of the course outline. Um, and I'm sure students will refer to this quite often throughout the course where they see what's coming up and what to focus on. Um, so for this part, I want you to think about what kind of assessments and assessment strategies would 
best revealed to the student and the lecturer how well they have achieved particular outcomes. So this is a little bit more than um, just providing the course breakdown, for example. This is also about assessing strategies and how students are, are assessed in ways that would indicate they've achieved certain outcomes. Um, and things to consider under this heading would be to provide a variety mm. of types of assessments and ways for students to show or express their learning. Um, for example, if you have a, a written um, essay that you need students to complete, perhaps allow them to also um, submit a, a, not just a, a written um, version, but also maybe a voice recording of that essay. So they may reveal their learning in different ways. It's the same thing, but what they've learned, they may express differently. Okay, and then the second point here is to ideally engage students in discussions about how they to assess the outcomes. Um, this, I lost my PowerPoint. Are you able to still see it? The screen's gone black on my side. Same, let me, apologies, let me stop. Sharing. And then see if I can get it back up. Sorry, guys. There you go. No, it's not coming back. Okay, hopefully this will work. Okay. okay, let's go to our assessment slide. Here we go. Back up on one second. Okay. Let's continue. So um, we were talking about engaging students in discussions about how best to assess the outcomes. Um, this this can yeah this can be very useful. It can be it can be very beneficial. Um, but often I I find lecturers don't necessarily have the headspace to do this all the the time or the opportunity, but even if it's only done for one of the assessments in your course, um, I think that may make a difference. And um, yeah, so following on from that point, you can then also provide assignment briefs, tour breaks, and marking guidelines as necessary and as preferred. Student assigned tour breaks and marking guidelines or, or briefs extremely useful and, and I would encourage you to add as much detail as possible to, to the info that you provide to students about the assessment. Um, included in the assessment section is the, the breakdown of the course mark, so um, how the title is compiled and how what it consists of, um, so that students have a clear idea of, of where their marks are coming from. And then ideally, the last point is ideally offer the opportunity for students to hand in craft assessments so that they can receive formative feedback for any major assignment. So if you have an assignment that counts, for example, 60 or 40% towards the final mark, let them hand in the draft assessment so that you can give them some feedback um, that they can then implement for the final submission of that major assignment. Okay, then I want to move on to the last heading for our course outline. Um, and this is a glossary of terms, abbreviations, or acronyms. So think about any unfamiliar terms that 
you might have in your code um, that may need an explanation that they've not heard before um, before starting your course. Um, and this is especially important for English second language speakers. Um, explaining these um, terms or abbreviations or acronyms would help them so much in, in when they um, access or, or absorb any course materials. So they won't have that extra layer of um, you know, cognitive load in, in trying to figure out what, what this abbreviation stands for, for example. So this can be a very useful part of the course outline for students. Okay, moving on then to now that you've created this amazing document, um, what to do with it and, and how to, to ensure that it's used optimally by your students. Um, so the, the, the three things that I want to point out here includes distributing it well before classes start. Um, if you have access to your students before the first day of term, um, I would encourage you to, to distribute the, the course outline to them so that they can know what's coming and it can help frame everything for them. Um, then the second point is to discuss the course outline. So when you have an orientation session, for example, or in the very first class where all of the students are together, you can you can go through the course outline with them and and um ask for any um, comments or clarifications or queries about it. Um, if you do use the Google Doc, this might be where you discuss any comments that were made on it, um, if anyone commented ahead of the first class. And then lastly, is to update, update it frequently as necessary, and then communicate this change so that it can reflect the actual um, implementation of the course and how to keep students and help to keep students on track um, and help them um, when they review for tests or exams. Okay, so that's about after you created your course outline. Um, okay, and here we are at the resources slide. So this is what I spoke about at the beginning and the resources we have about Enable Framework, as well as a link to the course outline template and the checklist that you can have. So you can use these resources as you see fit um, in the best way that, that you can for your classes, for your students. Um, I want to ask if anyone has any thoughts they want to share or questions, um, whether this is something that they could use or not use, um, and whether you think it might make your course outline better. I also want to briefly show you how, what the template and the checklist look like. So um, the link that you will follow from the um, PowerPoint for the template will take you to this document. Um, it's a, it, it's something that you can populate. Um, it includes the headings that I spoke about, as well as further headings that you can use or not use according to what would work for your course. Um, so you can see there are spaces for you to come to add your specific information. Um, you scroll down, you can see the headings, some of what I went through now, some, uh, some added ones. Um, so yes, this is a template that, that you can, that you can use. Um, as you, as you see, but in ways that will help you. Then the other link is to the checklist. So the course outline checklist. So let's, let's say you've you worked on your course outline, um, you think you added everything, or you have an existing course outline, um, you're not using the template, for example, and you just want to go through all of the things I spoke about today 
and see how your course outline might fit into these things. So you can use this checklist to um, go through all of these um, headings, the, the topics in this course outline. Um, it, the, the checklist is taken from the template, so these things talk to each other. Um, but you can make comments or for yourself, reminders of what to add or what to look into. Both of these documents, you need to make a copy for yourself um, and then use it, use your copy of the document. Okay, that's it everyone. Um, again, I want to ask if there's any comments or questions or um, thoughts about pre-designing your course outline. Okay, you're welcome, Kamalita. Okay, there's nothing that anyone um, would like to add. We do find the link. Yes, we, we will uh, we'll send um, the, the PowerPoint that I spoke to and the link to these documents can be found on the last slide of that PowerPoint. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that people find it helpful um, and that they can see that it could be used. And I really hope that you, you will be able to put some of these elements to you. If anything is unclear as you get into pre-designing your course outline, you are very welcome to contact myself um, or my colleague Donna. Um, we'll be able to, to assist you if there's anything that you are struggling with. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and that brings us to the end of this um, webinar. I hope everyone will have a lovely afternoon further and good luck with um, the start of term next week. <laughs>